the oxygen. Mac, what's up, man? Perfect, my God. What is up? What is up? Didn't um, didn't have time to do the scheduling and all that. I should just create the thumbnail real quick. Anybody else coming in? This. What's today? Today is the 18th. Now let's get a photo here. Where are we? Uploads, uploads, uploads. And we just use the bare upload. There we go. I just need to download this real quick. So then 18. Download the PNG. Download. There we go. Yeah, John, I'd seen, I saw that um, like Justin did one this morning, or maybe it was Dan did one this morning, and then um, Chris Wakaki did his, and then I saw Justin streamed again, like Tim was streaming, and just, man, it was like, people were streaming all the day. I got a couple invites, but uh, I don't really stream during the day. I just got kids and family to worry about, so it's not really anything I can do. Dismiss. I don't know if I can. I'm gonna have to edit this afterwards. Oh, I can edit it. Here we go. So let's turn that on. None of those. Submit. Can I go to the stream? Here we go. Edit. There we go. Change the thumbnail. The kids specify that. There you go. Six likes in the stream already. Thank you guys. Look at y'all. All right. Now we got the thumbnail updated, so that's good there. Martin, what's up? Or my teen? I never know how some South American folks say their different names. Because I called the uh, Lightspeed Stefan, even though that's how his name is spelled, but it's Steven. Pepsi all the way. All right, I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit. So last night I did, anybody that didn't tune into last night's stream, I did um, part two of the bear build here. And that was the Z and the X and extruder axis. Did all of that last night. I guess Z was mostly done. So it's pretty much X axis and extruder. Did that last night. It came out pretty good. I'm a little happier with how everything fit in at the end. And then I spent another, after the stream, uh, and a little bit this morning, probably another two or three hours, tidying up all the cables down here. And let's see if we can switch this up here. There's no there. Just turn this around. So you can see I got all the, the cables just temporarily put together. I like using um, twist ties, just spiral them around, kind of helps hold all that together. And I was able to get kind of a look of how it is, cut the piece of uh, nylon for the kind of support of all of this. Got it run in there, got most everything plugged in. I did flash the board this morning to make sure it works, but for some reason the LCD isn't working. Uh, when I click it, it's not like registering it for some reason, I don't know. I mean, it's a brand new screen, isn't it? I didn't reuse this one for anything. Or did I reuse this one? No, this one came with the Enzy board. So I'm wondering if I got my cables screwed up here. So maybe I'll try and do that. I'm just kind of seeing what's going on. Um, but yeah, I don't know why it's it's being so weird on me there. Oh, I did also print out this uh, spool holder today, which is really nice. Just a three-part print uses some 608 ZZ bearings. 
goes in there. And I like having the spool holders on the side because then it's going to go up here to the PTFE fitting and then reverse Bowden down to the Gruder, which would be nice. Um, but yeah, I want to fire this up again. And I'm using the Prusa firmware. I might end up flashing the clone firmware that I have, which is a little old, which I think I have. I need to pour from my email. Prusa Research. Yeah, I don't know what the issue with this is. That's not going to work for me. Yeah, like when I press it, nothing, nothing happens. I mean, Grant, there's no bed. So maybe it's just not even allowing you to get to the menu because there's no bed detected. I don't really know why it would do that. Oh, this is a Bontech gear part. I need to put this away. And with an extra grub screw, I don't want to lose those. But yeah, I mean, like the screen, it works. Can't really see that down there, but I mean, it's on, but when I click it, nothing happens. But if I double click it, it goes to the baby steps. Ethan, this is a uh, bear clone that I'm building. So, I mean, it is a Prusa bear. It's just not using Prusa parts. It's using all my own parts that I either had in the shop or I went and bought for this project. It's not. So I do have another screen. So I think we're going to try another screen and see if it still does this. Because I don't know if it's a board and firmware issue or if it is a screen issue. And thankfully, the K280 that I just took apart uses the exact same screen. And if you don't know the difference between the old school um, 2004 LCDs or the newer ones, it is this right here. The contrast knob is tiny. Before, it was humongous here, and you couldn't really fit the arms that hold the screen on down here. They don't clear that. So you have to um, like either snip those away, there's a modified version for it. But that is the one thing you know, this is a newer screen versus some of the older ones. So let's power this down. Plug these. I don't know which is which, so we're just going to YOLO. Plug it in and send it. Oh, well, first time's a charm. Look at that. Hey, Darren. Derek, what's up? Uh, Ethan, so I've already made, so if you look right here, this red printer right here, this is a, a DIY Prusa Mark III S that I built. Bought everything completely on my own online, saved about 200 bucks, maybe about $250 by building it myself using all clone parts. The only thing that is an original Prusa on it is the bed. I did buy the bed from Prusa, but everything else I sourced on AliExpress or Amazon I was able to build it, run it myself. And it works out. So hold up a second. Nope. Still doesn't do it. <clears throat> Why am I not getting the menu? Try, let me roll back a firmware version. Let's go for some firmware. Let's do that way. Phone's blowing up. So, 
Older versions of firmware. Let's just go back a version and see if that helps at all. So we're on 390. So let's go back to 381. See if that helps at all. Let's get the cable here. Push a slicer up, configuration, flat pin of firmware. It already detects it, so it's detecting the board, which is good. As you guys can see right here, it's detecting the board. Browse for that. We're gonna this is 391 open. And let's flash. And on the screen it tells you upgrading firmware, do not disconnect, right? And it gives you the percentage of how it's going. See if this fixes it at all. It could be it could be the cables, it could be a cable issue. These are the cables that came with the printer. I do have another set here, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And while that updates, I'll be right back because the family is calling. So give me one minute. And I'm back. All right. Hey, Aaron. Trying to figure out why this isn't working, Aaron. I don't know if you heard me, but uh, I'm not able to get into the menu on the on the printer, which is odd. And I'm wondering if it's because it detects that the bed is not there. So it's like, yep, nope, can't do anything. I don't know. So, and the Z motors are not plugged in yet. I just want to see if I can get into the menu. I mean, I, I could go ahead and plug in the, uh, all right, it's verified, everything worked. Yeah, it's still won't let me in there. I wonder if it's a safety feature. Hmm. Curiouser and curiouser. Well, at least we know it's not the screen. So which one's one? Which one's two? This one's one here. So let's put the other screen back in. This is one here. There's two. And just for the sake of troubleshooting, I'm going to go ahead and connect in some of these other parts. Connect the Z motors. The X motor is not connected either. And we'll just connect the, uh, the heated bed thermistor. We'll just plug that in too real quick. Just to see if that changes anything. Because I don't know. I tried compiling my own proofs of firmware, and again, I, I got the, there's a one lady who's in my Discord, um, she doesn't really talk much, <laughs> but she's in there, and uh, she helped me create the one for the clone, because that, that um, for some reason, it just doesn't want to calibrate properly, so she had adjusted the settings for me, and told me how to do it, we have a whole email exchange, and her trying to explain to me, how to flash my own firmware, or how to compile my own Prusa firmware, and I just was unsuccessful. I might try it again, because that was like a year and a half ago. I am much better with firmware now than I was a year and a half ago. Uh, okay, so there's the LCD connected, the Z motors are connected. Let me get an X cable here. Um, None of these will work. So I'm going to have to go ahead and retip one of these for the X. So I'll do that right now. Let's 
the boring process of Shane switching out a cable. Thrillingly boring. I'm just going to place it with a DuPont because the NZ board needs its NZ connectors. I don't have those. But a DuPont works just fine. But the standard JST connectors that come on uh, motor wires do not work. So I need some Kino ones. Wait for that one dislike because I called cable connectors female. Oh, I did find my wire snippers. Uh, wire strippers, I should say. I, I uh, put them up on the top shelf of my printing shelves for some ungodly reason. I have no idea why. But I did, and I went up there the other day to print something with the, uh, the uh, Artillery X1 and sitting right behind it. Um, Ethan, it would, it would, it's cheaper to buy the MK3S from Prusa than to buy all the parts from Prusa because unless you've already bought something from Prusa, you are unable to see that side of the shop, uh, the Prusa shop. So since I bought my original Mark 3S from them, I can go in and my MMU I bought from them. I can go in and buy any of the parts that I want because I've already bought from them. But if you're looking for like a first build and you want genuine Prusa parts, you will need to find somebody who's already bought one of their products in order to have them order it for you. It's a interesting business move by him. Uh, I don't fault it. I know some people argue about it, but uh, he's like, yeah, I mean, if you don't want to do business with me, then you can't. If you haven't already bought a printer from us, you can't buy any of our parts. Okay. All right. But going third party is way cheaper. Like, you know, I say probably two, about 250 bucks. At least on that build. And you can go even cheaper. I mean, now with the SKRs 1.4 out, you can do pretty much everything a Prusa can do. With an SKR 1.4. You lose some of the nifty features uh, that Prusa has made, like the auto load filament and the way they do their bed leveling and their first level test that they have kind of baked in, but there's a lot of really smart people out there working on firmware for the SKRs and they are getting uh, very far in their development of it. I think it'll be soon when they get that totally up to snuff with Prusa. Probably going to have to switch some of these around at some point, but I just want to get it installed. I need to actually take that off. I, I didn't want to pay for a second MK3S, uh, Ethan, so that's why I built my own. Um, it is a very good printer, but I wanted to see, can I build one myself and bring the cost down? And the answer is yes, yes you can. You know, you do sacrifice like I don't get the Prusa support. That's really awesome. Prusa support is pretty fantastic. And they cover the printer for a year. You're not going to get that with the DIY build. But again, I was okay with that. Not everyone is, but I've kind of over the last year and then now a few months, kind of taken the deep end into making my own 3D printers, because it's fun. 
and I've got people to help me, like Aaron. So, there's X goes up here. Again, those cables are probably not right, but I'm going to get that in. And out there. And there. Line that up. So Aaron, you'd also mentioned an interesting um, business model. The thing is, it really works for them, which is kind of the funny part about it, is that it works so well for him. Now, if that was like reality or something like that, I mean, I can't even think of any other, um, I don't even know what to call Purusha's shop. Um, they're not niche. They're just they're, it's their, own, their own thing, their own brand and all that stuff. They're the only ones that can get away with it. You know, TiVo or what are they now? Homers is not going to get away with that. Um, Creality is not going to get away with that. They are all about volume and less about like pure quality. Yes, most of their printers are, are not too bad. They're way better now than they were years ago. But they're all about the quantity over quality. And I still believe, even though a lot of people fault Prusa for different things, I still believe he is for quality over quantity. I still think that is true. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plug the, uh, the bed thermistor here. I just want to see if this fixes the LCD menu part. This goes right over here, this way, right? Okay, just close this up. Spin it around. Cable in. Okay, now all the motors are connected. And all the components are connected now. Nope. So can't get into the menu. Although the bed temp is airing out. I'm still getting an air min temp bed. I did not connected that. It's not uh, recognizing it at all. So let me grab a different, see if I have a DuPont connected thermistor. Thermistor bin. What's up, Gunner? Here's Travis. What's up? Uh, Mark, it's gone. <laughs> Here's the extrusion for it. It's gone. I killed it. I killed it the other night. I decided that with that extrusion, I can build three custom printers. Maybe I plugged it in the wrong spot. I did plug it in the wrong spot. Okay. Let's reboot it. This is going to be a crazy safety feature. This is what this is. Mm. 
Wow, that is it. That is a crazy safety feature. If your bed thermistor is not plugged in, you can't get into the menu. Wow, that's insane. Who would have thunk? Wow, I am <laughs> I'm genuinely shocked right now. Absolutely shocked. Yeah, Mark, it is. The problem was is the uh, the twisting. And here I have all of the other ones. So these are 358 millimeter long uh, extrusion parts. And I can build three Megatrons out of the extrusion for this because these can be X, X, and then the top of the Z gantry. I can do that for three times. I can do that three times. And then these three pieces of extrusion, I just need the two Y's and two Z's, and I think I can get that out of those two pieces. If anything, I can get two printers out of that. Um, you have a whole like slew of extra parts and everything here too. I mean, I've got a good screen that would work in it. I've got the long cables. Uh, everything that I need to build more printers, I was able to get out of that. I got the motors from it. Uh, it was 24 volts, so I've got a 24 volt power supply, which I've already made the Megatron power supply fit because this one is a little bit thinner. It's not quite as wide as a, like a standard El Cheapo 24 volt power supply, which is what I'm using. So yeah, wow, that's a, that's a crazy feature. Now, while I have it plugged in, I'm gonna go ahead and flash the newest firmware on there again, because I rolled it back to see if that was the problem. 3.9 flash. Yeah, no worries, Aaron. That's, that's the one thing that, that mainly Aaron is trying to figure out is that I had to substitute the front uh, bar on Megatron for a piece of 2040. And I would like to just use 2020. So there's a few different ways to go about doing it, but the simplest way is to figure out how to mount the 2020 from below. Um, so we're trying to figure that out. I say we, I mean him mainly. I'm here for moral support for him. And figure out how that we can get that to work. Because right now the way I'm going to publish Megatron is with the use of that 2040 extrusion. Do, 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 do. Just finishing flashing now. Yeah, the feed is good. I'm wondering, Aaron, I might need to just get out like a sketch pad or something, but I was thinking, what if we make... I think you'd be able to print the feet see if I can doodle it on here. So right now, um, how are the feet on that? Feet are basically, basically the feet are like that, okay? And that's just a flat piece. What I'm wondering is if we can I wonder if you can just step it. So here's the here's the foot down here. Yeah, that's the, the rubber, the TPU part that we've been putting in there. And then make this just kick out and come all the way down to here. And then have this, we can retain basically cutting this part in half. So retaining this part and then just kick this up. But I think you kind of already messed with that, but that might alleviate having one piece and then figure out some 
other piece to come here and wrap around, kind of Ling this way over it. So kind of like that on the top and this on the bottom. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. Um, but maybe I'll try and have a go at it too. Maybe I can make something just, um, uh, I don't know, do like my little ghetto uh, fusion and see if you can transformerize it a little bit better than how I can do it. That might help. Uh, Martine, uh, if you look at last night's stream on my channel, there will be all of the links there for uh, where you can buy the frame, where you can look up the bear project and all that stuff. Um, all that is linked in that last one. Now, I don't know how strong that'll be, Aaron, but I think definitely doing a two-prong approach, one from the bottom where the extrusion's overlapping because we're going to, oh, this is going to be stupid because this is so long. Um, but we're trying to get the extrusion to sit like this and having that foot kind of go along the bottom there and come up and then having a top piece. But even on the top, it doesn't have to wrap over. We can just use that little 2020 corner you made for that and that would work out. Just to retain rigidity as, as best as possible in that. Proof's not been calibrated yet. I know. Um, uh... Well, Z moves. I'm not going to get too crazy with it because, and again, X, I don't even know if this is going to work. No, I have to, I have to figure out the pin out on that cable there, um, on that motor, but hot dang. Now, for anybody that knows that you're building a, a Prusa machine using the NZ board, using Prusa firmware, you cannot get in the menu if you have a part that's not hooked up properly, aka your bed thermistor isn't on, connected, or you have a bad bed thermistor, you can't get in the menu. So they really, really do try to make that simple. Pull this back around here. Uh, I did I did print out a few more of the 2040 ones, and I thought about putting them between these plates, but they don't really fit well because these are just skosh wider than how tightly these um, are putting uh, pushing in. Maybe if I once I use the metal ones, they'll be better. But using the polycarbonates, they are not as good. I did fix the wobble here last night by Aaron using two of your little 2020s up in there in each side. And that solved that issue uh, pretty straightforward, pretty easy. But yeah, I'm just waiting for those parts. I'm really hoping when I go to work on Monday that they, uh, I will have a bunch of stuff in the mail. Where's that other? Screwdriver, there it is. Devin, what's up? Uh, the volume for this is the same as the Prusa Mark III, so it's 250 on the X, 210 on the Y, and 210 on the Z. Uh, you can get um, a little bit longer uh, Z rods and you can extend that up to as long as high as you want. Honestly, um, I have a few plans. I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I have those other frames. I can make three more frames and I am getting rid of a few other printers that I have. And I have some gnarly ideas on what to use them for. And Aaron did give me a good suggestion of doing a, uh, a two in one out type of, um, deal. So basically putting a, a Y splitter. So I have a Triangle Labs Y splitter that I could put on one of these and then just do two like feeders up top or maybe make this Bowden somehow. I don't know, but it would be kind of cool to try to figure out how to use one of this frame or use a Megatron's frame as a platform for doing some testing. And a two in, a two in one out would be kind of fun. 
the 20, I, I can send it to you, Aaron. I'll send you the fusion file right now. Um, the, wait, do I have them in this build? I do have them in this build. Megatron. Let me just send this to him real quick, small corner. Here. It's in the mod channel, Aaron. Well, no, because I want you to work on it. Because <laughs> if you can figure it out, I can get it printed and I can test it. Because I have the frames, uh, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm chomping at the bit to cut those down. So I just want to redo the the sizing with you to confirm that all the pieces are the right size, and then I'm I'm ready to cut and kind of get going on it. I might clone. Because I, I have the clean Megatron build now in Fusion, I might clone that build and then mess with some of the extrusion to get all the right sizes on the frame, uh, just to make sure. Because I think the only thing we need to change is the this X here, because the one up top is already sitting on top, which is good. It's just the back, but I do need to confirm because I think I want to go to Prusa build size using the 320 millimeters, or if I want to do up to 400 instead of using 300 mil, add an extra 100 to it. Uh, I just want to confirm what sizes of extrusion I need to cut. So I think I might just clone that, strip everything out except for the frame and whatnot, and then get all my sizing in there. Um, I totally lost my train of thought. But yeah, like I said, so those other frames, I'm thinking about using them as kind of like a testing platform maybe. I don't know if I will or what, but it is... Um, it is an option. It really is. Something for me to kind of think about. Because I can use all of these files if I just make things a little bit bigger. Um, but yeah, I'd say I am super duper happy with the these rods that I have and with the, the Ziltec bearings. There's no play. I'll be more interested in the Y once I get this. Um, once I get the Y rods in and mounted, um, that's the other thing, Aaron, is that if I want to build these other ones, I need to remeasure all of the axes to make sure that I have them in the right size. Excuse me. <coughs> Holy smokes. I came up the wrong pipe. Tonka and trying to cough at the same time. Anyways, I want to get it similar to the size <laughs> to make it a little bit easier to um, print out. Kind of maybe also refine Megatron. Maybe make Megatron 2.0. Um, <clears throat> excuse me there. That was brutal. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm um, feeling good with this build. It went really well these past few days. Just got to wait for these parts. So I still need to do the belt for that. Actually, while I have time, and I'm just kind of shooting the shit here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the Y motor cable. Because I do the same thing that I did to the X. I need to put a DuPont connector on the end of it. So if I do that now, when I go to do the Y build, I can just plug this in. It'll also give me time to troubleshoot the, uh, the wiring, which I might end up doing that just on the side before I do the actual Y assembly. Just so I can, you know, have the, the cables already uh, pinned out the right way. And I figure out the pairs. Man. What size shirt do I wear? I wear a large.
I mean, Gunner's not right. I mean, I, it got to fit my figure. You know? Big up top, skinny in the middle. You know? Hey. Gunner just gets angry because I'm a, a more buff nerd than him. I might actually need to buy some more DuPont pins here soon. I'm getting down to last, like, you know, 40 or 50. <laughs> I used to make a lot of cables with that, but I had to make all new connectors for the BLV uh, and for Megatron, actually. Um, because Megatron, I got the LDO motors that came with the Prusa style uh, end connectors on them. I had to make adapters. Uh, because those connectors don't fit on the SKR 1.3. Oh, there's always a few of those around here, Gunner. <laughs> Well, thank you, 3D Printing Gear. Shoot me, uh, either hit me up on the Discord or shoot me a DM on Twitter. If I'm not following you on Twitter, follow me and then I can get back at you there. Do, 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 do. This one thing I did, somebody's crooked, dang it. Try to do them straight. Doesn't always work out. All right, so that'll be for Y motor. That's done at least. <clears throat> kind of clean up here a little bit. If you guys are looking, if you are doing these builds and you need some super cheap nylon, buy this Gizmo Dorks crap. This stuff prints like garbage, but uh, it is 2.85 nylon filament. I mean, I haven't had any Gizmo Dorks filament that printed well, so I'm assuming it's garbage, but I think it was like, I don't know, 10 bucks or less for a 200 gram spool. And since I knew I wanted to print more, make more printers eventually, I went ahead and just bought the spool and that'll last me for as many printers as I ever make. I'll never go through all that. Oh yeah, email too. Yeah, my email's listed around somewhere. Yeah, so this thing is uh this thing's coming along really well. I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with all of it. I think it looks phenomenal. So that's always a uh, a plus. Put this these away. I did print some extra of some of these carbon fiber parts. I might end up doing another carbon fiber build using um, some gray extrusion. Because I did just get a big shipment from Ziltec. Because their extrusion is pretty cheap. And I've used it for other projects. But I went ahead and ordered a few sticks of 2020 and 2040 to have around. So I might use some of these leftover, these double carbon carbon fiber parts for that. I, I did order more carbon fiber. Um, I ordered some PETG. I need to order some, uh, what's it called? I need to order some uh, PLA carbon fiber. Because PLA for half of these parts is perfectly fine, but they're not heat near any heat and they're super rigid. Like these corner brackets in, in PLA are great because it's so rigid. PETG gives you a little bit of wiggle. 
but it's more heat resistant. So everything for here, or if it's touching a motor, maybe here, but your, your extruder hot end, that all needs to be PETG. The rest of it can be PLA. There's no issues with that at all. And I need to put this on. I did, oh, I did also last night wire up the uh, hot end as well. Ran, I put all the cables in there and had to re-terminate the uh, thermistor because it just had a little uh, JST connector on it, which again, these do not work in the NZ board. You have to use DuPonts or the NZ connectors. I think I need to order more springs too, because I only have, I think I found one more spring in here that will work. So if I'm going to build more of these, I need to get a few more springs. <clears throat> ah, shoot. Let's save these connectors, because save everything. I'm a pack rat when it comes to parts, at least cables and connectors. So I can always I can always get more more ends, but it just seems economical to save this stuff. So if you buy like sun on fans, um, most of them don't come. I mean, you can get it with leads, but most of the time when you buy them, they come without leads. Uh, so you'll need the connector tips for those. And wire. Like I had the, um, the part cooling fan on my original Mark 3S died, so I replaced it. But all I did was just cut the lead on the old one pull the lead out, well, guess what? I re-tipped that lead, and now that's the lead for the um, the extruder fan because it's a three-pin and it has the NZ connector on it. Done. And I just put a DuPont on it to make it hot-swappable. Uh, I didn't want to... Uh, I didn't feel like soldering the entire cable. I thought that was a little much. the Allen key. All right, well, I'm happy to at least figure out what was wrong with that because I was a little afraid that it was going to go. Uh, Chris does use carbon fiber. He uses, um, so he specializes in printing and selling um, carbon fiber polycarbonate um, parts. And yes, there is I noticed sh uh, shrinkage issue on a few parts. The extruder went together actually really well. Again, a little bit of warping, my fault. But overall, uh, it went together really well. We'll find out in the end if everything did turn out okay, but overall the shrinkage was minimal. The most place I had shrinkage issues was the, because uh, also the, the enclosure, the electronics enclosure back here is poly uh, polycarbonate. And I did have to take my, um, knife and just kind of scrape out just the, just the, the skosh in there where a little bit of the drooping happened. And once I did that, I was able to then insert the square nuts, but that did take a hot minute to get those in. But once I cleaned those out with the X-Acto knife, they went in very well as they would in a PLA or a PETG part. <laughs> It also depends. I mean, if, if you're printing PLA parts and then you're only printing in PLA, no big deal. But if you're printing a part cooling duct and then you're going to print PETG or ABS, then yes, it will, depending on how close it is. And the Prusa models, both the Bear, the Mark III, the Mark III S, all of those put the part cooling fan very close and kind of pups around the hot end there really gets nice and close to it and that will cause it to melt if you just run these printers without a sock on them they'll melt the they'll melt the parts i had that happen on 
my Mark 3S because I took the sock off, didn't think about it, started to print, the print failed because this completely melted and was like hanging down and was just ripped all the parts up. It just got gnarly real quick. So there's a burr on that side. But adding on a silicone sock will make it so much better if you do have it in PLA. Now, granted, all of my old, like um, the, the GTEC i3 aluminum, my first printer, with, that was printed in PLA. On the FT5, first printer printed in the PLA. Yeah, but, but there's a lot of people that don't run the sock. So I have socks for all of the Ender hot ends. So that's, they're like MK10, I guess they're calling it for their heater blocks. I have socks for all of those now and I have a bunch of spares. And then I have original E3D socks and clone E3D socks because the originals are longer of a he heater than the clones. The clones are a shorter uh, heater block. Yeah, and there are some people that print that in ABS. I, I really should. I have, I have several rolls of ABS. I think I was sent a roll from somebody. Yeah, Coex sent me a roll of ABS that I have yet to try. I've done all their other prints, all their other filaments, but I haven't tried that one yet. And then I also have a ASA from eSun up there, I think, that I haven't uh, printed either. I really need to get printing those. I have about... Three. I have about 14, uh, 15, including, I just had a box down here I got from somebody. Uh, layer up, they sent me one. So I've got 15 rolls that I need to review. I need to print and test and do all that jazz with. I've just not been in the mood to do filament tests in the past couple months. So maybe I'll get to it again. Now that I have a pretty decent um, time lapse setup on the Mark 3S, maybe I'll just do them on there and in my when I'm not printing everything else time although I'm trying to get another setup the same as that on my clone mark 3s I just need to print I just got a pi I had a pi I got a pi 4 for my retro pi and I took the pi 3b plus out of it and I'm going to use that for an octo pi yeah gunner they're they're not um fantastic but I'm using some original ones and I'm using some clone ones uh, and I'm using some like legit from E3D for an E3D hot end and I'm using some clone socks for an original E3D hot end and then again I, I also have the clone uh, V6s with their specific size socks and I have everything separated in drawers um, in my parts bins. I have just E3D parts and then clone V6 parts. Oh yeah, my SD cards. My uh, my one-year-old thinks it's really fun to pull the SD cards out of my printers. So I think this one goes in here. It's always the same two printers. It's the Mark 3S and it's Megatron. She thinks it's so funny. Bugger. Shooting fireworks. Well, they're trying to break in one or the other. I don't think fireworks. I haven't dedicated a card to this yet. I want to do that. I need to actually pick up a pack of like, that's the other thing. I think about, I need to pick up like a pack of four gig SD cards or something just like stupid cheap to use in all these other printers that I have. So that works out. Maybe I'll throw some, uh, what's it called on this, some sleeving. Just kind of dress it up a little bit. I have some sleeving coming, some of the textile stipe coming in for all of this, for the bed, for here. It's all coming. Just waiting for it to get here. Same old story of the pandemic, things taking forever to get anywhere. I do need to do a video about the, the competition. So I was talking to a bunch of people in the Discord and we have pretty much decided to uh, give everybody another 30 days because there are people that ordered parts 
like I ordered before the competition started and I still don't have them. And there's people that have ordered parts like shortly after the competition started for their printers and they still don't have their parts either. So it's kind of hard to have a category of people who are actually going to print and tune a printer to work if no one has any parts. So for me, what is the most rigid frame? Uh, the the BLV MGN. <laughs> if you watch that, that thing is built like a brick house. And um, yeah, they th that frame is all 2040, and it's it's an absolute brick house. I'm 100%. Most frames these days, honestly, are pretty good. Uh, the FT5 is great. You're only using 2020, but it's using the TNL uh, joining plates. That thing is super solid. I could stand on that. Nothing's going to happen to it. The bare frame is solid. Can't really say anything else about it. I mean, it is a solid frame. Uses. I mean, I'm also. I also made it more solid using these these new 2040 braces that uh, Aaron made. Um. But yeah, I would have to say the BLV is the strongest, and then for an i3 style, it probably would be the Bear. Uh, Megatron is is very solid. I don't really have any really issues with that build. You are lazy, Aaron. I'll start uh, shaming you once I get mine. If I get here, here it is. I think I'll have my board Monday. If I get my board Monday, I will have a working printer. By Friday, 100%, it will be printing if I get my board Monday. So there's your challenge. You've had your parts now for weeks before me, and if I get it printing before you, you are lazy. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, though. But I still have to design the um, screen mount for mine, so you do have that on me. I haven't figured out how I'm going to mount that on there yet. I think right into the end of the 2040, but um, um, again, I have literally no design for that whatsoever. Jim, what's up? I think there's anything else that I needed to really needed to work on tonight. Oh, I can put this in here. I want to reuse this uh, non-two-color LCD frame for another build. There's no reason to waste a good 3D printed part. Especially when I make more of these. <laughs> we'll see, he says. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, especially at night when I start, I mean, the kids are in bed. So I'm trying to really focus um on what i'm working on at night and trying to spend less time of like oh i'm working on something but i'm also watching youtube on the side like i'm trying to just put on like music and just ignore youtube all together see you later aaron so um but the, the one part that we're trying to figure out we'll pull this up here differently um nope there we go so here in megatron um i had to substitute in this this 2040 part right here in the frame which is just kind of like the bear in order to make that work. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's copy this. I'll work on this for a few minutes. And we'll do it in Megatron. Copy it there. And then we're going to rename it Megatron All 2020. And then go into it. So the thing we want to do is eliminate the 2040 in the front and just have it be 2020. Because that was the one thing that we, the time frame that I had given Aaron and myself to work on this, the one thing we could not overcome was the need to make the, the we made the Y as low as possible. And that was our downfall, is making that as low profile. I mean, if you look at the front of this, I mean, that's low profile. If you're just, just looking just right up there between where the top of the 2040 is and the build plate, I tried making that as low as absolutely possible with it still being strong. We succeeded, 
But once I had that down on the 2020 down below, down here, it was way too low. And the, the cooling fan and the probe would knock into these uh, Z mounts over here. So that was our big problem. And what I want to do is if I go ahead and just hide a bunch of this stuff, we can hide the Z stuff, we can hide the extruder and the axis there, we can hide the Y axis, hide the LCD, hide the power supply, the frame and the feet. This is what I kind of want to work on here with this. So there you can see how the feet are. They use four uh, M4 bolts to kind of hold this on. And I want to eliminate, let's go into frame, and this X bar and this X bar. I want to remove these. So we're just going to hide these out. And then we can get rid of this here. And then this other front one here. Actually, we can delete all four of these. We just delete those. And we don't really need the feet right now either. So what I want to do is figure out how long that 2020 needs to be. So I need another piece of 2020. I think it's way down here at the bottom, maybe. Actually, I can just copy this piece here because this is exactly how long I need. For the top bar, let's do a copy. Let's do a paste new. Drag it down. Drag it over. And we need to change my mount point to here. Up. And then we got to pull it forward. Right there. So that is how I want it to be. We're just going to delete these two out. I don't want these in there anymore. So I have the frame. We're going to copy this one. Right click. So if you just hit uh, paste, it'll just actually just rename it. So you just have to do paste new. So you have a whole nother one there. And we're going to pull that back to here. And that's good right there. So that is how we want it to be. And we'll call this X bar front and X bar back. And then we're going to unground it and then ground it again so that it doesn't move anywhere. And that's how we want that to be. I don't have the plates on Megatron yet, the ones up here. I'm still waiting for those to come in. Uh, but once they do, I will add those on. And I, I did debate on putting it on the inside of these, but I made the power supply uh, mount on all the sides there. So the power supply is basically my thing. Um, Although that is one thing that won't fit any longer is if I do the power supply, yeah, that does not fit there anymore. So that is another hurdle that I'll need to figure out. Because the way I have it is that is inside here, not outside up top there. So I'm going to have to rethink um, I'm going to have to rethink that because that's that is an issue. And if I re-enable the feet, so we have it like that. So my my thing is is just kind of project this up. So if I just do a create a sketch there, and we go here, it's 30 mil. Let's just do 29, give them a little bit of space there. I guess we can do 30, it's fine. And then 
run this down to that spot there. And if we run this across to here at 90 degrees, and then we, whoa, we're not, Pitches are off. There we go. If I extrude this up 20 mil, that's kind of the way I'm envisioning it. it. Needs to be something a little more elegant than that, but this is completely printable on this face. Again, that is again that is something that I'm just trying to kind of spitball on what to to do here. Um, but instead of going there, if we draw a line here and go up to there directly, now this is not going to be and did something like that maybe, or a little again, a little better looking. But that would suffice the corner there. And then we could just chamfer this. Up like that. And that gives you a very, very strong and very printable. Again, printing on this face here. No support needed. Can totally print that out. So that would be one way there. Now, uh, let's look at this real quick, Jim, as you're talking about that. So right now, Y is um, 380, right? Yeah, 380 on the Y, and X is... 340 and these are 358 so the thing is I was going to try and keep those the way they are um, so if I extrude you by 18 that should give me oh, not insert inspect this face to this face that gives me that 358 which is what I have right now And this by 18. And this also will give you the option if you want to use a different uh, probe, you can. So I'm going to hide the sketch and is the space between the smooth and lead screw 17 millimeters. Uh, I don't know, Gunner. Um, let me pull up the original that I'm not jacking with right now. I think we only just modified the bare parts. So if I unsplump. Looks like 17.3, Gunner. 17.379 on the inside of it. What also, uh, Jim, if you look at this, it actually digs in. Uh, actually, let me, let me move this real quick. Hang on, let me, let me finish what I was doing here. Unground this and then Y bar, this Z bar, I want to move 18 millimeters. And I want to move, let's reground this. And then for feet, to move this one and this one. 18 mil. So that's our. That did not work properly. Let's 
that work right? Rain. Oh, it's because it's a rigid group. This Z bar and this Y bar, 18 mil. Okay, now we can ground that and then rigid group it. Okay, so that won't go anywhere. Now I'll go back to the feet here. Eighteen. Although this is in one of those. Where it was. I'm getting hit up by Bob and White. Hang on. I need to go check on the kids. I will be back in a moment. There we go. All right. I'm back. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm kind of envisioning something like that for the, the feet there. You know, you can put a bolt inside under the shoe, not a problem. I didn't on mine, but if I needed the extra um, rigidity of it, I could do that. But again, Aaron can make this look pretty slick the way he does. I mean, these look really good, and I think he can do the same thing for this to do something like that. And I think that would be a good thing. Now, again, so now I'm using the 358 on the X to make that a little bit wider of a frame. And then we have the um, the Y issue. So let me pull back in the, close this, power supply. If I need to move this. A little bit 18 to get that lined up with that there. Move a little bit more now. Maybe the 0.5. So I would need to extend this, so let's move the bar, get to unground, delete the rigid group. This out of the way. Nineteen millimeters. Which if I just go 20, so if I just move that 20, uh, that would make that 400 then. Because this is already 380 here. If I just extrude this out another 20, and if I inspect from face to that face, did that work? Yeah, that's 400 even there then. Again, 20. So that'll make it so the power supply will easily fit there with the extra little mounting hole there. And I have those there for that. And then, well, that still works. And then, how long is this again? So Z right now is 365. And that is with, let's pull on, let's see, guys. Around the frame again, let's rigid group it again. Now let's do the Z left, right? Yeah, Z left is with the integrated lead screw, which is, oh wait. Okay, rigid group's there. Um, Z left, so right now, uh, this thing is how long? here to the top. So right now it's 347. So I need to do 53 makes that 400. That gives me a little bit higher of a, of a volume there. It's not too bad though. And I would just need to, I just need to stop doing this. Stop grounding and stop making the rigid group. I need to move this stuff around. So that means the top bar. So that. Move this up 53. Move these up. I need to make this 53 millimeters longer. 53. Okay, and then um, let's do it one at a time. 
this one over here, extruded weird, 53, there we go. And then we need to move, um, I think that's it for the frame. The frame is then 53 millimeters taller. And then we can close that with the Z left. We can move this up, 53. And this guy here, we can extrude this 53. So that is now with a 400 millimeter lead screw. And uh, this guy of, I don't know how long he is. How long are you? There, to there, basically 400 as well. 399.6, yeah. So 400 on both of those. That's not too bad. Gives me a little bit, a little bit bigger of a build volume. Not a ton, but skosh. And that makes these extrusions 418. Oh, I'm too thrilled about that size. There's definitely more than the extrusion I have because these are 1150. Um, so out of that 1150, I'm obviously going to get two of those. It's four, what did I say? 418 minus 418. That leaves me with 314 left over. They're just 50 millimeters too short to get another piece out of them. Just measure these again. I think they, they should think they measured 1150. No, they're, they're, um, twelve centimeters. So that's not what I want. It's even shorter. Yeah, so it's 80 millimeters too short to get three pieces out of this. I have that 1120 minus 400. That leaves me with 320 left over. And while I can use those pieces for X bars, I don't have enough of those. But I do have some other V slot 2020. It's just in crummy condition because it's recycled. Yeah, this stuff is not in great condition at all. It's got a bunch of holes drilled in it. But it is black V slot. Oh, look, a nut. Put this away. M3. There they are. Let's get these off the desk real quick so I don't knock them over. I knocked over these springs yesterday. Uh, I was kicking myself for that one. Thankfully, it's just springs. It wasn't uh, too hard to pick all those up. But, man, I was ticked. I was super ticked about that. So, I would need to find... One more so in order to do this at a four hundred on those lead screws, I need to figure out how to get three more pieces for three frames out of that one frame. I don't have any black twenty twenty V slot. Yes, I could just buy it, but I am attempting to avoid to do that by reusing this frame to make other frames. 
I can get at least two out of it. And I would need one more stick of the 1400 in order to get the rest of that built, the third frame built. But it could definitely get two frames out of it. And all of the 2020 I just bought is silver 2020. It's not black V slot, it's silver. It might be T slot, I don't know. I'll also look around the shop, see if I have any other 2020 laying around here. Um, but again, it's if I want it to look fantastic. I can reuse those pieces of 2020 and it just won't look as fantastic. So let, me, let me bring those on the table here and see if there's a usable length in between the sizes. This is what's left over from the A10 frame. I'm sorry, the U10 frame that I cut up. And these are the pieces I'm more interested in down here. So these have from that frame, or my up here, they've got the holes in there. So if I just go between the holes, I have enough. So this would be one piece. This would be the same thing here. Two pieces. And then this one is a no. It's this piece that this was where some of the the rails went on the front. This one's got holes all over it, honestly. 34 to 2020, that's pretty sick. I mean, can I buy more? Yes. But I'm trying to reuse printers that I have that just suck and try to get more out of them. So again, I need a total of nine pieces. I can get six out of these three long lengths of 2020. I can get two more out of these two pieces. I am needing one more 400 millimeter piece and I could use this one and just make like the back bar of one of them and it just won't look as good. But it is going to forever bug me that those holes are there. I, I hid them here on this frame. Uh, you guys won't be able to tell, but um, I hid them in this frame. The holes are right behind these Z brackets, they're back here. You just can't see them from the front. From the back you can see them, but they're completely hidden. I was able to reuse all good 20, 40 frame uh, for that printer. All the rest of it is in fine, I mean, a little scuffed up, but whatever, I don't really care about that. But these just blatant holes kind of irk me. Wish I had one more piece of black 2020 somewhere. Don't have it. And Jim, that's the one thing of living the way I do overseas. I don't speak the language of pretty much anywhere I go, which makes it really hard. And um, stores here suck. Like, I went to the hardware store to get some taps. They didn't have taps. Like, they had the handle for a tap, but they didn't have the actual taps. I was like, are you kidding me? And, I mean, there's some, like, super jank local places to go. But, I, just, I mean, I want to just go to a brick-and-mortar store and buy what I want to buy, but I can't. So, I mean, if I could go someplace and find a place that had these locally, I would absolutely buy them. But it's just not really an option. Actually, thinking about it, no, it'll still be, it'll be visible. Even if I try and center this up, the Y won't be that far apart, I don't think. 
So I was thinking maybe the Y um, covers would cover that. And they will. They do cover it if that's exactly where those fall. And I guarantee they won't because this is spacing for a 300 millimeter bed or 400 millimeter bed, sorry. Humongous bed. And these are definitely not going to line up. Let me, where's my, let me, let me take it over to Megatron. Survey says no. I can cover up one hole of each of the holes. Comparing it to Megatron. Oh. Not thrilled about that. Not thrilled about that at all. It would look like this. Let me bring it over now. It would look like you can see, see that hole right there? And you can see that hole right there. It would mostly cover them up. I don't know. I'll have to think on that one. I would hate to buy a whole stick of 2020 old extrusion just to hack off this one piece. And I don't have any other things that I want to rip apart that would be 400 millimeters long. be cool to have a little bit more Z height on these. Um, you can check it against the zip code 20189, uh, Jim. That's my US based address and then things come to me from there. That's all I need. I need one 400 millimeter piece of clean extrusion. And it would be nice to not have to use this. But there's no way around it. And we're looking at it from this side, it's good. But as soon as you turn it, you're going to see those holes. But you'll see them less if it's this way and if it's in the back. No one's going to look at the back of a printer. If they would have made this gigantic 600 millimeter tall uh, delta 80 millimeters taller, I would have had full 1200 sticks and I could have made it work. Well, roughly. I mean, you're losing a millimeter or what, two millimeters, two or three mil you lose with each cut. So, not quite, but it would have been closer. Closer than I am right now. Uh, that, that zip code is in uh, Virginia. Uh, Jerry, so the problem is, is the, there is a way to solve this, but because of the way that um, Prusa and the bear do it, so let me pull up this one right here. So because of the way the Y motors um, oh, thanks, Jim. Um, let me look at that real quick now. What is it? Uh, PD Tech on eBay. eBay. PD Tech. Visit store. And search his store for 2020. He bucks with ten dollar shipping <laughs> for a 400 millimeter stick. Let me do a. It's the same shipping for everything, so I'll just get the longest one I can. But it, uh, he doesn't seem to have black there, Jim. It's just the silver.
Spot 2020 on the bay. Fusion. It's a 10 meter set. I mean, Ziltek, it's 10 bucks on Ziltek. And they've got free shipping. So, I mean, I guess I can just order from Ziltek. With the gym, 10 bucks. Yeah, I mean, Ziltek has, has a meter. For I think ten. Um, so over here. Because here is here's their listing, eBay listing here. Their T slot, ten forty five for six hundred mil. It's definitely cheaper on their website, but it's free shipping on eBay. Um, but on their Website, I can use my discount code. Yeah, right here. With a picture of it. Four hundred. Oh, it's out of stock. A meter. Meters in stock. I appreciate it, Jim. Now let's see what the shipping would be. Oops. To Virginia. Zero one eight nine. window so I can add my add my coupon expired okay let me go my email real quick did they email a new coupon yet Earnings. No, they've not sent a July code yet. So let me reply to her. Email them, see if they give me a July code. But uh, being affiliated with Ziltech and making the money, they give you a discount. So uh, that would be update that. They're like 15 bucks for one stick. I guess it's better than nothing. I don't want to do that. I appreciate it, Jim. But yeah, thank you very much. Anyways, I was talking to uh, Jerry. The way that these are built is if you look here at the front of the printer, let me move this over a little bit. Okay, look here at the front of the printer. You see how the Z motor is on top of the Y extrusion? Because it's that way, this head will collide with this. If you do keep the 2020 in line at the bottom there, this head will collide. Now, the way to fix that is to move the entire motor outside of the 2020 extrusion from the, the Z extrusion, the upright here, you move it outside of that 
and then you can keep all that line because you can drop the motor. Basically, here's the extrusion, motor's on top. You can drop it here and down, and that way you just add bigger feet on the bottom to clear the motor, and then that way you can make your uh, Z shorter, all, all of that one plane, I guess, of the X and Y extrusion, you make that plane level. That's the issue with the way that the, the Prusa machines and the Bear machine is designed. I would have to redesign all of that. And I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> um, because I like the way they do it. Now there is there is design on on uh, Thingiverse for I believe it's an Anet mod that that you do an Anet A plus create that and you would make it into uh, basically a Prusa equivalent machine, but they had modified it so those go around. And what also it does is it puts your linear rods. Um, so instead of being right now as you see they're here they're in line with the Z um, with the Z lead screw. It would move that to be in line with the 2020. So basically it makes the carriage, those two carriages going up from being in line to being an L with the lead screw on one side and the bearing on the other. That's how you can move that out and to the side some more, or you move it moves it out and back some. It works, but it would require a complete redesign um, of my parts. And again, Aaron and I, we did actually talk about this today. He brought up that, you know, not a huge fan of how this is. I, I agree with him. But if it's something that, that uh, we want to partake, we would have to redesign the motor mounts, the X, the, the two carriages that go up on the Z axis. So those are part of the X carriage. Redesign both of those. We might still be able to use the bare extruder, which I like mostly. Um, but redesign motor mounts. Redesign top Z mounts and redesign both of the X axis motor and idler side would both have to be redesigned to fit that. Now, to get around all of that, long way of getting around it, the Forgetech 2020 i3 got around that by top mounting the, um, the Z motors. So instead of putting them on the bottom, where you have to worry about that clearance of the extruder hitting, they flipped it upside down and had the motors up top hanging, suspended basically, hanging down so that you can go all the way down to the bottom. You have a flat axis, uh, a flat level of extrusion there, and then you build up from there. So basically the motors just run in reverse. Um, I believe there was issue with how they did that. They were also using spring couplers, which if you didn't modify it and put a bearing in there, those could um, stretch. But if you use an integrated, integrated Z screws, I could keep all of this almost exactly the same. Just fix up the, I had to redesign the Z motor mount and the top mount, basically flipping those upside down to mount a little differently. Not impossible though. But that, would be different way to do it. I just don't know if it'd be worth it, but I could still use all the bare parts. Just need to make a new mount for the bottom. Hmm. That is something to think about though. I and mean, this is this is kind of why I like when I go through some of these brainstorming sessions and I'm kind of just thinking about what to do for the printer and things like that. I like having people around to bounce ideas off of or get out of the box ideas or someone suggests something and I'm like, oh, think about that. Um, I do like that a lot. Yeah, so this is, it's an interesting problem that needs an interesting solution. It really does. And I like the way the printer is built now. It prints great. But in order to, I mean, again, I don't think this looks that bad though. I mean, what do you, what do you think? Cause you're the one who brought this up, Jerry. I'm very curious. What, what do you think about this front? So having the feet be like this, you know, instead of how they were, which is like this. Obviously this way looks good. 
you know, it, it, it looks it looks good with the the logo there. I, I think that that looks that looks pretty good in my opinion. And this obviously this other foot here. This is not a final design. This is just me kind of cutting at it and wait for Aaron to um, make it look good because he's the he's definitely the more aesthetic one than me. But I think this foot doesn't look that bad. It's also unique. That's that's the one thing is that I don't want to. Right now, the frame I basically built is a bare 2020 frame. Basically what it is. Um, but this does add a little bit of uniqueness factor to it. Um, originally, I made Megatron to be a 100% swap for um, the Forge Tech 2020 i3. Which it still can be. If I just shorten this back down, we, these feet will work with that. So I could publish that, hey, take your Forgetech 2020 i3 and you can make this printer basically. Um, it would work out without a problem. Because that's the nice thing about the, the Forgetech 2020 i3 is it's just, it's a platform and you can just take the extrusion and build another printer, why not? And you can build one even better than what it was. It's, it was a good, um, good cheap solution. It was like 200 bucks and a few years ago, that was a good cheap solution. All right, we got real crazy idea. What about a single Z motor under the bed in the middle and then drive both lead screws with the belt looping gear to increase torque? So, in order to do that, my only concern is um, my concern with that, I think, how can I look at this that way? So, um, M Fokish. I'm going to call you M because that's easy to remember there. So M, my only concern with that is I would have to widen out the lead screws because I would need to drive the motor. The drive motor has to be in line with this 2020. So the gear, let me pull it, make myself big here the gear would have to be in line with the 2020 to make that work. The only reason being is because if it's above the 2020, those belts are gonna interfere with the, the Z, the uh, Y axis belts there. And I could do it on the top, but I don't think that's as an elegant as a solution as um thinking but i do like your thought there it just i would have to definitely modify this to go out more because if you look at it from here it's like just barely above where that that is so it only has to move out a little bit but it is still a little bit needs to move out maybe five mil at most to clear that and then go below it and then have a motor somehow mounted down here, looping the two of those together. That is a very interesting solution. In solution. The one thing you do lose though, so um, to counter that, the one thing you do lose though is right now in Marlin 2.0, using two individual Z motors, that are both hooked up to their own um, driver, you now have the Z-axis auto align. So you can tell it where to go on the bed. It will measure using the Z-probe on each side and it will auto the canter. And it will perfectly align those together using its own little formula. It's very easy to do, but you have to have two motors instead of one. Uh, or you can do two motors on two separate drivers. Because if you have two motors on one driver, it doesn't work. It has to have two different motor drivers there. 
Um, yeah, it's it's definitely not it's definitely not a, a crazy, um, not a crazy design move there. And you just need lead screws. It's just making a, a robust mounting point um, down below. So probably use some 608ZZ bearings, stack them together on either side of the frame there um, this way. So if you put them, so right here, if you double stack 608ZZs in the bottom, double stack them at the top, or it has to capture at the top because just because otherwise they would just be all over the place. They don't have the rigidity of a motor being held onto them by that much depth. Uh, just need to design some type of a mount down there for those. It is an interesting solution. Definitely something I'll think about there. Uh, hey, Brandon. No, 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 Brandon. So we're just kind of, so what I'm doing is, you know, is Aaron and I are trying to figure out a elegant solution of using all 2020 for Megatron. And that was the one thing that we could not do. And I had to go ahead and cut down a piece of 2040 in order to make it work. And we're just trying to figure out some type of mount here that goes, because uh, it could do this. We also could do a sandwich. So I put this chamfer in there. If I delete this chamfer out, it could basically make another one of these to go up top. And they would both just kind of clamp those two together in their own way. Um, both would be easily printable because this one is easily printable. So it is, um, it, it is an option. It's something to think about here. Get fancy with the chamfers there. That's what he likes to do. Um, but I do think it's an option, but I wanted to just kind of send him some screenshots of my ideas here and see if he can figure something else out. But also, Brandon, I was just trying to finalize. I've got all this extrusion from the K280 printer. I was kind of just trying to finalize a, another design. And what I kind of settled on here was a 400 millimeter tall integrated lead screws for the Megatron build, which would just raise your height of another 53 mil. So right, uh, right now it's... Um, 240 something, I think is the, the Z height on it, uh, would basically take it to about 290. Uh, just shy of 300 millimeter on the Z height. Just shy of it. Be really close. But I'm, I'm, ba I'm basing it off of what's easily available. And 400 millimeter integrated lead screws are only 17 bucks a piece. So they're readily available. Getting custom size one is um, a little harder and it's more expensive. The Zarbio uses custom size ones. Prusa uses custom size ones. So 300, 400, 500 are, are the most common that you can find on AliExpress. You probably can find custom ones if you dig long enough or maybe on eBay. But if you just search integrated lead screw NEMA 17, you're going to get 300, 400, and 500 millimeter uh, lengths. So, yeah, I mean, I think making making one a little taller, I think, would be nice. Um, I'd like to have one to be just a smidgen taller. Component. I think we're done with the frames. We can rigid group that and then ground it. Now that, that won't move on us. Okay. Yeah, so I think that's, for this build, I think that might be the way I go. That will still be plenty strong if we do that connection point on two sides. That ain't going nowhere. 
to be very dad about it. Um, so yeah, so at least I know the lengths that I need for all of that. Uh, I extended the Y by 20. So I just need to make these rods um, 20 millimeters longer. So right now they are 380, those also be 400. Yep. What, um, there. I wonder what their lengths are that they have. They probably have the, they probably have the Prusa ones, which because they're custom, they're expensive. Which is Pacific hardware. It's probably going to be in there. Um, I mean, they have all LDO motors, which obviously are nice. Um, <laughs> so this one is 321 so that's Prusa specific and that's 50 bucks for a motor and then this one is also 321 this is also um, this is $59 this is Prusa specific LDO motors are great they are just very very expensive and I am thankful that they had sponsored the Megatron build with those motors because they are super expensive. And the thing is that, Jim, I want this to be taller. You know, I don't want to go Prusa size. I want it to be a little bit taller on the, on the X, on the Z. X and Y I'm limited because I'm using a Prusa bed and I don't want to make a custom bed because that's just so much more. The Prusa bed is nice. I like it. Um, it has tons of build plates that you can buy for them that are not too expensive and it works I like it. it's 24 volts I like it I think it's a good platform um, but yeah it it's just expensive that's not what I wanted it's just specific hardware where they got in here Tag still active? No. Okay, well they got they have Voron stuff in here for the Prusa specific things. Um, you know, I also I also kind of debated on doing a, a linear rail version um, with one of these frames. SLS printed parts? Ooh. That's nice. Let's see what we got here. So Jim, I, I tried that. So um, Tech2C, I don't remember his real name. The guy that, that created the Hypercube, which is right here. I built his Hypercube exactly the way he did and I modified a little bit from there, but I pretty much went with his exact build on the Hypercube. And while, what he had to do, he had to, break his motor apart and he was able to get the epoxy to come apart. I tried that and I ruined the motor. So I really did try to do that. It just did not work out at all. So I'm a little hesitant to do that. Even though, yes, I know I've seen people do it. I've seen him do it. I was unable to do it myself and I don't want to ruin another one. Um, just a T8 lead screw, Jerry. So the four start T8 lead screw. So what's that? That's a, a T8 X4. I think that's what it is. Um, this is what they LDO sent me right here. The Prusa set, 125 bucks. That's what they sent me for the Megatron build. And I actually just ordered a Pinda 2 probe from 
pretty solid, which I think will be here Monday. I think it will be. They have these stock extrusions. So 2020 black meter. Oh, free shipping over 45. Not so much. Um, I guess that's just linear rail. Yeah, like I said, I'm I'm kind of thinking about with some of these these frames on building out some other things. So do a two in one, do a linear rail one. You know, it's, it's all it's all possible but I just need to kind of I want to make one taller but because of the sizes I have I could make three taller ones so a white on black screen on ice hey Darren Audio motors are good. Again, there is no doubt there whatsoever. But I am cheap. For anybody who doesn't know that, I am very cheap. And because I'm upcycling so much other stuff, I'd like to try to keep it as cheap as possible for some of these. And for the parts that I have and the and the the things that I need, I only need to spend like 200 bucks, and I can get these these custom printers off the ground. Not not counting the the PETG to print the parts, but two hundred bucks is not that bad at all. Um, because I have a ton of Bond Tech gears now, because I went ahead and bought a whole bunch of extra ones and uh, I, I doubles and triples of a lot of other things that I have. So it would be very easy to do. But that's I mean that's kind of where I'm at right now. And again, I'm going to work with Aaron. Aaron's the main one that. Um, I've been working on working with to design all these parts and I'm definitely gonna take some of the things that you guys have suggested to him and say hey what do you think about this and kind of get his um, get get his input on what he thinks because he's much better designing these parts and I'm good at roughing them out but he definitely puts me to shame on the rest of that uh, I think that's where I'm gonna leave it tonight I think that was a good stream we're just hit over two hours now um, I never had nothing planned for tonight but at least I know why to get the screen working on there. I'm further along on the frame for some of these other custom builds that I want to do. And you guys gave me some really good ideas to, to think about. So I appreciate that. If you guys have anything else you want to suggest, you can either leave it down in the comments of this video or you can hop on the Discord. There's a link down below. Hang out there, chat with us. I'm on every single day because I have nothing else to do right now, <laughs> not being at work. So hanging out in there with people. People are doing custom builds. We have people... Uh, creating printers uh, or just troubleshooting or just shooting this stuff and hanging out. So I'm not going to do lead screws all axis. Uh, M definitely not. Um, machine shop press, James. There you go. That's what it is right there. So I did also think about maybe buying a puller. Maybe a puller would work, but I'm also worried about damaging the coils. But anyways, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. So again, join the Discord. If you guys want to help out, these custom builds I'm doing are completely funded by Patreon and affiliate link usage. So there's a Patreon link down below and there's a bunch of affiliate links down there with discount codes. If you need some extrusion or filament, check out Ziltech. It's a good 15% discount down there for that. Uh, but that's all listed down below if you guys want to look into that. Um, otherwise, yeah, I think that's it. So happy printing, everyone. Wash your hands. I'll see you guys Monday night for another live stream. See you guys later.